guys. Hey, I am so glad that you came to this lesson today. You know, we have been talking a lot about animals, haven't we? We've been learning about all the different vertebrates. Who can tell me what a vertebrate is? Yep, it's an animal with a backbone. Reach around and touch your backbone. Yep. So what are the classes of vertebrates we learned about? Fish, amphibian, reptile. That's right, bird and mammal. Yes. We've learned a lot. We've classified them. We've learned about their internal parts, their external parts. And now we're going to talk about a different kind of animal. We are going to talk about an animal that does not have a vertebrate. Does anybody know what those are called? Invertebrates. That's right. So we are going to talk about a whole bunch of different families of invertebrates. Very exciting. Okay, so the first invertebrates are so simple that people thought they were plants. Can you imagine? They thought they were plants. Yep. So these are called periphera. And here's an example. Look at that. Can you see that people would think that that's a plant? Yeah. When microscopes were invented, scientists were able to see that this is actually a living animal because they could see all the tiny parts in there. But until then, People saw these growing in the ocean and they thought that they were plants. Here's another example of a periphery. And what's really cool about these is they can be small, but they can be as big as a table. And they come in different colors and sizes, but they're very, very simple. They don't move. They don't have eyes. They don't have noses. They don't have hands or legs. They don't have brains. All they do is as the water flows through them, in these little tiny holes are little hairs that wave around and they absorb microscopic animals from the water and digest them and then spit their waste out. That's it. Very, very simple, but they're important. They live in the water, they grow on the ground, on the rocks, they attach to the sand and they filter the water. They help clean things out of the water. So that's periphera. So that's one family. There's thousands of different kinds. Another family of invertebrates are called the nadarians. And here is how you spell nadarians. That C, you don't say it. That's kind of a weird name, isn't it? Periphera, nadarians. Nadarians are special because they have stinging cells. You don't want to touch them. So an example of a nadarian would be coral. And this you can touch because this is the part after the polyps die. This is like its skeleton. But inside each one of those holes lived a polyp. It had little tentacles that waved around and on those tentacles are stinging cells. So when, if you're ever diving in the ocean and you see some coral, you don't want to touch it. Here's another example of coral, a different kind of coral. Isn't that cool? Other animals that are nadarians are jellyfish and sea anemones. So we know what jellyfish look like, don't we? And some of us have encountered jellyfish. Yeah, we want to stay away from jellyfish. And a sea anemone also has the tentacles that can have stinging cells on them. So we don't want to touch those. We see them in the ocean. They all live in the ocean. And again, they're very simple animals. They don't have eyes, they don't have noses, they don't have ears, they don't have brains. They do have a stomach. They digest food. So they're, these polyps, the tentacles on the polyps kind of wave around and when something comes by that's food, they will, again, take it in right here into the center, digest it, and then spit back out the waste. That's about it. So they're very simple. The jellyfish, they can float. But again, their tentacles bring in their prey, they digest it, and they just spit back out the waste. Some jellyfish have organs that can sense light, but they really don't have eyes either. So that's Nadarians. All right, the next family, and you notice each of this is very, very simple. These are a little bit more developed. Some of them can move. Some of them have like light sensing technology, but 
They're still very simple, but this next family, they're a little bit more developed. They are the worms, and we've all heard of worms, haven't we? There are three families of worms. We're gonna kind of put them all together, but there are flatworms, there are roundworms, and there are segmented worms. And here, worms are soft and squishy, so I don't have any examples of worms, but this is really cool because these are the tubes that were formed by marine worms that live in the ocean. Isn't that cool? You can see all the places they would go through those tubes. Now we know probably the most about segmented worms because we know earthworms. We've seen earthworms and they're helpful, aren't they? They help the gardens, they poop out good stuff for our plants, right? So earthworms are an example of segmented worms. And another segmented worm you might have heard of is called a leech. Leeches also live in the water and they attach onto animals and suck their blood but they don't hurt us. They don't really want them on us, but they don't hurt us. Some worms though are very harmful. They can live inside of animals, even inside of us. Roundworms and tapeworms, oh, those are harmful worms that like to live inside of something and eat its food and can hurt it. A lot of times, a lot of us give our pets medicine so that they don't have roundworms or tapeworms. And then there are flatworms. And flatworms, this is a marine flatworm, this lives in the ocean, isn't that beautiful? And actually a tapeworm is an example of a flatworm as well. So worms can be harmful, can be helpful. Some live in the dirt, some live in water, some live in animals, oh, so gross. They're a little bit more developed. Earthworms, for example, have a heart and there's blood that moves through their body. So they're a little bit more developed. They still don't really have eyes or ears or legs, um, but they're getting to be more developed. All right, let's see, let's try one more family, and then I think we'll probably wrap this up for today and we'll learn more later. The next family, oh, these are some of my favorite. These are the mollusks. The mollusks all have a shell that protect them. So when we do the shell lesson, we are working with mollusks. Here is an example of the shell of a mollusk. The animal lived inside of that, and the shell protected its body. Now mollusks are special because they have what's called a foot, even though we wouldn't think of it as a foot, but it's what helps it move around. And some have eyes, most mollusks have eyes now. They have hearts, they have some organs inside their body. And here's something else that's really interesting. Octopus, squid, and cuttlefish are all examples of mollusks. Yeah, they don't have a shell on the outside. Their shell is actually on the inside of their body. So when we think of squid, did you know they're mollusks? Yeah, so squid and cuttlefish and octopus. And they have something else really special. They have special cells in their body that can change color. Have you ever seen that on a video? It's so neat. So mollusks, some have a shell on the outside that protects them, and some have their shell that's in their body. But remember, they have eyes, they, oh, actually, in octopus, they believe, scientists believe are one of the smartest invertebrates, which is really cool. They have brains, they have eyes, they have tentacles, um, they have organs on the inside, hearts. So they're getting more and more developed. Mm -hmm. Now, I think I'm gonna pause here because I see that some of us are ready to get back to our work. And we're gonna learn, there's two more families that we're gonna learn about next time.